Welcome to the Long Range Pursuit Podcast, presented by Gunworks, where we learn about and share long-range shooting techniques, science, and gear. Welcome to the Long Range Pursuit Podcast. I am your host, Mitch Libby, and I am here with my good friend, Mike Bilch. Thanks for coming over, Mike. Thank you. Just good to be here, always. Just to hop over the mountain. Yeah, yeah, I'm close. It's perfect. convenient. It's perfect. Uh, well, Mike, I'm uh, looking forward to the opportunity to talk to you today. I've Obviously, we've talked plenty of times before, but uh, I just want to get a little bit of info from you or hear from you, kind of your gunwork story, if you will. You know, um, where did you, where did you first hear about us? Oh, um, I think I heard about gunworks uh, probably just shortly after you guys started up. Um, Being a Wyoming boy, you know, rumor gets around, but um, whatever, 16, 17 years ago, and then I. I think uh, moving on up the clock, I probably talked to you at a show mm-hmm. when I started getting back into the sheep hunting and deciding I need to get a more premier rifle. So cool. That was it. But uh, yeah, probably 2015 or 16. Yep. As they shook hands. Yep. 2016. Yep. I think it was at Sheep Show. Yep. From Correct. Yep. yep. Sheep Show in Reno. I remember that. We built you a 280 Ackley. 280 Ackley improved. Yeah. <laughs> It's my baby. <laughs> the OG. Yeah. I've uh, had a few guns since, but uh, I, I often comment to you, like, why did I why did I switch? This thing is so sweet. Yeah. But, uh, it's traveled along with my 28, a lot of places around the world. Yeah. So. Cool. I remember you came to me at that show. You were, you had just, like you said, you were just getting back into the swing of, thi- swing of things and uh, you had booked a handful of stuff. Was that the stuff you did in 21 or was that? Yeah, yeah actually, so that. we talked, uh, no, actually, when I, when I first met you, um, I mean, I've been hunting, a lot of people think I've just been hunting sheep recently, and I've been going kind of crazy recently, but uh, my first sheep hunt was actually just west of here, um, 1989. I grew up in Wyoming and uh, over the mountain in Sheridan's, and so um, a lot of hunting in our family, and elk, deer, antelope, et cetera, and, and um, uh coming out to I had a you know like I grew up in the Jack O'Connor era so you know my had a great parent uh guidance in hunting and our family hunted so first rifle was a model 70 uh 30 out six and four power bushnell scope I think or something but yeah when I I uh cranked it back up uh it was about 2016 17 I'd uh to start good in the twilight of my career, knew I was going to be stepping down, have more time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I'd been, I'd done a few hunts, but not a lot in that 10, 15 year hiatus. And, uh, so, um, yeah, came to you guys, understood, uh, that this new thing called precision shooting was coming up. And, mm-hmm. uh, I was honestly proud to see some yeah. Wyoming boys, uh, starting it up. That's cool. And, uh, out of Burlington, Wyoming yeah. population five or whatever <laughs> yeah. so yeah. uh uh yeah it was it was uh pretty cool and obviously uh it's been very successful for me in my my hunting and mm-hmm. and uh and and very cool watching the progress of the company you know i i came from another yeah. background of having a, a company have huge growth etc and problems and and uh etc that come along with working but um watching local boys do a really cool project uh, product and then for me it was the innovation uh that gunworks still has which is you know immediately you guys had the long range university mm-hmm. and i was pretty cocky as usual um you know i don't need i don't need to be taught how to shoot a rifle whatever <laughs> i took that lr1 mm-hmm. uh gosh must have been about that time i yep. got the rifle yep i remember that and uh I, I was like, and I, lo- I love getting into stuff and learning and, uh, I couldn't wait to sign up for level two and whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think since then I've probably taken LR1 two or three times yeah. and LR2 and your sheet mountain course. And it's just, uh, you know, you always pick up something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think your instructor, Brian says that now, like, even though he had 30 year career as a, uh, scout sniper and swap guy and, uh, he always took a general course to mm-hmm. pick up on the basic keep yeah. keep sharp on the basic so yeah. um so yeah the innovation of gunworks with the 
the LRU, uh, a gun program, mm -hmm. you know, scope rifle and ammo that, you know, was all, all ready to go. And, uh, it, it taught me so much. And it's really fun getting into the sport. That's cool. Coming, coming from previous to that, uh, I was, I was a traditional bow hunter for a lot of my, yeah, a lot of my, uh, younger years. So, uh, getting into precision was a big jump. Uh, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. There's like, it's, I, I use archery a lot for like, uh, you know, comparing and, you know, how, how, you know, down the rabbit hole you can go with it. Right. And like you said, you can just, you're always picking up stuff and it's yeah. like changing this, changing that, trying yeah. this, you know, to just try to be that much better. Yeah. That's, that's what we try to do here. Right. We're always trying to innovate and yeah. be better. And yeah, I mean, turn up the clock here, but I, mean, I just got back from a Tiburon Island, uh, sheep hunt and, and, uh, great hunt, real hunt, um, and got a nice ram and, and, uh, uh, you know, I had your new, uh, bino system with mm -hmm. me, um, and rifle and cartridges and, you mm -hmm. know, it's just on one hand, it's keep it simple and get yeah. it done. On the other hand, it's like, man, everything's just solid. It yeah. all works. Yeah. Plus obviously a lot of training and education mm -hmm. and practicing. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I remember you came to, uh, Let's see. You came to end, uh, where we did our level three at Enzyme Ranch. Yes. Down there in Utah. A couple times. Remember you did that one. I think the last time that we did it there and you were there is when it was the same year you went um, and you took your Ibex at that 28, that crazy steep angle yeah. straight up, right? Yeah. Is uh, the, Markor. Yeah, your Markor. Yeah. Oh, that's pa right. It was Pax, your Markor. Pakistan yeah. Markor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think I took that course right before yeah. I went over to Pakistan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one of my all-time favorite shots. And I, I'm, I, again, you know, like, uh, I, I love to get close. The closer you get, uh, you know, the more you seal the deal. Yeah. Uh, reduce your chances of, of failing or not getting a good shot. But um, that mark or, uh, that was uh, cashmere mark or, and uh, that that shot's one of my all-time favorites because the, mm -hmm. the angle was, and I had time, had a ton of time with this mark or so. Uh, we figured out later the shot was about a 63, 65 degree angle, yeah, like 680 yards. Uh, but my compensation kept telling me like 380 and I, oh I didn't gosh. believe it. Yeah. Right? And I, and I had the time and, and finally I just like, you know, <laughs> kind of that moment, like believe, believe the data, yeah. believe the gun yeah, and took the shot and I've shown them. A lot of people that video of that shot and everybody guesses yeah. I shot high, but the angle was so steep, but it, it, it the bullet uh, projected through the animal and hit super high above him. Yeah. And so the video in regular time seems like it yep. missed. But, I remember uh, that. Just, just a tremendous uh, shot. Um, so yeah, it, uh, without gun works, there's no, like I wouldn't have taken the shot number one. Yeah. And, and it stretched my box of, you know, comfortability. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just seemed right and went ahead and did it. Yeah. Um, this Tiburon hunt, I just got off it. It was, uh, another one that, you know, it was maybe 280 yards, but, uh, the Ram was a front on shot mm -hmm. and, um, uh, he was also covered up with, you know, with some rocks. And so the guides were like, don't shoot, don't shoot. And I generally don't take a front on shot, uh, but I was close. And then he kind of quartered a little bit towards me. And so I took it and got him, but, but, um, uh, it still speaks to the same discipline, which is, you know, um, uh, had that been 600 yards, I would have been, you know, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, mm -hmm. so I think as your instructors say, keep, keep in your box. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Like you talk about, it was what you said two or th 290 or 390. I can't remember the distance you said on that one. Uh, just under 300. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for most people, 300 yards may seem yeah pretty far, you yeah. know, and it's, it's, that's what we kind of. You know, we, as you can see in those classes that we've done all over the place, you know, we're shooting seven, eight, nine, a thousand yards at those yeah. classes, but it makes those 400 and in or 500 yards and in, you know, they yeah. tend to be, you know, okay, I'm feeling really comfortable right now. You yeah. Know? I should get a commission for pitching your classes so much, <laughs> but, uh, I've told, you know, I've told a ton of guys, a lot of which have come here and it's like, man, just drop everything you're doing. I don't care how much you've hunted, how much you shoot come take a, you know, an LR1 and every one of them unanimously comes back. And I'm like, how was the course? And they're like, man, I wish I'd have taken that 20 years ago, yeah. you know? And, uh, 
to, to, to speak about that real quick. I mean, you brought up a memory that course. Um, the first time I went, I couldn't believe like, uh, whatever, 10, 15 people in a room by the end of the day, we're all ringing gongs at like 900 yards. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm older. So I remember the days of the 30 out six and you put up a 10 inch pie plate at a hundred yards. If you hit the pie plate, you know, you're good, you know, yeah. cause nobody, everybody was sitting around talking about taking a 300 yard shot. Now people sit around and talk about taking a 600 yard shot, yeah. you know, with comfortability and training. Mm -hmm. So, um, you take the course and Gunworks being, in my opinion, probably one of the first formal training universities for yep. this precision shooting. Um, speaking of that vision, um, it, it, um, uh, it resonates cause you see the results even as an observer, mm -hmm. let alone for yourself. So yep. it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about a little bit of your your future. What is your what do you you got coming up? Uh, more addiction to the hunting shoot thing. <laughs> it's ruined my life. <laughs> no, I I uh, I've always had a sheep bug. Uh, I got it from my dad here in the stories when I was a little guy. Especially talking about this area west of town here when he'd go up and almost before the time sheep were even licensed to hunt, sixties uh, and seventies, and then some other trips for him, but. Yeah. Um, I'm working on, you know, my ultimate goal isn't about just numbers, but it's, uh, it's about, uh, working on this list, a super 40 international super 40. So, uh, um, I've got, I do have a brown bear hunt in the peninsula here in May. Um, and then I'm heading, uh, up for a BC stone in August, and then I'm um, heading over to uh, Russia for a cyan ibex, which is new ibex. They've kind of discovered, um, I think some of the first hunters to get into those were last year. Um, so going over there with a buddy, and then, um, uh, yeah, I've got a, uh, I got them stacked up. Um, 2021 was my big year. Of course, a lot of stuff got canceled from the 2020 yeah. year. Yeah. 2021, I, I, uh, I went a little bit crazy. I had like 13 sheep hunts mm -hmm. and, um, fortunately all, all but one were successful, but, um, uh, yeah, um, I'm still kind of on that binger right now. And, and, and so, mm -hmm. uh, do it while I can, mm -hmm. as I told a buddy, when I, um, uh, started really cranking up the sheep hunting again, I, I had about 10 rams, uh, before the pandemic that I had attained over 20 years. And then I was like, you know, you don't see too many old guys in those Ovis magazines or Wild Sheep magazines on these international hunts. So, and I'm kind of getting gray, so I better get going. But, uh, yeah, just love the sheep hunting. It's a great challenge and, mm -hmm. and a great, great test of these rifles and, yeah. and your shooting skill. So, yeah. We've got those, uh, um, back to our kind of our courses and stuff. Um, what one would you say would be your favorite? that you could pick from? Well, I like them all. I mean, everybody, everybody I ever talked to about them, they always wanted, you know, well, you know, I shoot and I want to, you know, I, I probably don't need level one. It's like, no, you need level one. Like I'd take level one two or three times if I were you, but, <laughs> but going back, I mean, uh, the, probably the best one for me and, and my needs was sheep mountain shoot. Uh, the angles, we didn't have much wind. Uh, funny enough where that's located wow. west of town here, but, Rare. um, learning angles, learning tripod right after that course, I was in Pakistan and, and I always thought tripods like, yeah, whatever. Um, but then after that course, I'm like, I'm packing a tripod everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, of course now it's a standard of equipment for mm -hmm. precision shooting, but, um, I was in Pakistan and, and actually there where I was at, it was, um, uh, the trouble was foliage. And mm -hmm. I was hunting uh, Punjab Uriel, and um, the guy was like, "I don't know how you're going to get a rest, and we can't see these things, and we couldn't get around on them." And and I just popped out the tripod and extended the legs all the way out, and I was shooting straight over the tall grass. It was almost like looking like an African hunt. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that sheep mountain course was, uh, without a doubt, just it just get you more and more muscle memory experiences of, in practice of, you know, incline, decline, um, uh, tripod use. Yeah. And maybe fortunately we didn't have wind so we could at least, yeah. at least, uh, just stayed on what we had. Yep. Yeah. Kind of practice more of the, 
fundamentals, if you will, instead of just, oh, let's figure out this wind. Yeah. You know, what's the wind doing? Yeah. And that's usually what that class is for is, hey, how do we apply the wind that we're going to have here, yeah. you know, into our shooting scenario, right? Yeah. So that's, it's cool. A lot of guys are kind of, they get both of them dumped on them at one time, you know, yeah. and you were able to kind of focus on yeah. the shooting aspect. Yeah. I've had a chance to uh, be in a few NRLs. Uh, competitions and that's really fun. A uh, lot of lot of precision shooting enthusiasm in this part of the country, and it's always fun talking to my local buddies about um, uh, their different shoots and competitions because we get wind. You know, northern mm -hmm. Wyoming man, you got like <laughs> if it isn't blowing twenty, it's not a normal day. Yeah. So everybody can shoot wind fairly well, you know, because yeah. they get a practice with it, and then mm -hmm. you see these other guys come up here from you know, Georgia and they, they shoot a competition in Wyoming and they're just totally frustrated and, yeah. and, uh, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, we, <laughs> we live in it. So, yep. but yeah, I love the sheet mountain course, but, um, uh, but uh, as well, like Ensign was really no different. Yeah. I mean, it's had, you know, huge variabilities of, of shots and real country. I mean, they hunt mm -hmm. mule deer in that area and so, yep. um, and, and wind. You know? Yeah. A lot of us so, own. Yeah. But you, go ahead. But do you know? Once again, doing doing the basic level courses and then going on to those, uh, man, everything just really starts coming together mm -hmm. for the education. I think the courses are set up really well that way to put two and two together for cool. for a student. Cool. Um, I always like to. I, I'll I'll ask somebody here and there of their setup. Like you're, you know, and this can be obviously. I don't want you to go down to. Hey, I'm I'm packing this much food or whatever. But if you're going on a big hunt like that, you know, cause I have a lot of customers that want to go travel, you yeah. know, like you do and do some of these hunts. Yep. Um, you know, and it could be applied to any Western, you know, hunter too is, you know, what you take on a hunt like that. Yeah. yeah that's you... a good question. Well, I can tell you by, by default, um, I've got a pretty good system now. And, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, just as a side note, I mean, I have a, you know, I'm a veterinarian by trade and used to do a lot of surgeries and kind of had the surgical know-how and I'm a little bit obsessive anyway. So, uh, I like lists, I like checklists and, uh, I have a, um, I call it my master checklist for hunting and it has every single thing on earth you could ever imagine taking on a trip. Um, so what I do is I pull that out and I, before any trip, of course, every trip's different. You know, if you're hunting backpack hunting Tibber on Island versus a mountain hunt in Pakistan, whatever. Um, and so I just go down the list and, and that way, at least I have it on the list. 80% mm -hmm. of the stuff I'm probably not going to take. Um, <laughs> uh, but at least I don't forget. Yeah. And, uh, inevitably on any trip like this Tiburon hunt, the funny thing that I wish I had brought that I just didn't think of a need was like a handkerchief or a scarf, a, okay. a light scarf. Yeah. And these guys wear them under their ball caps down there to, as a little sunshade. And yeah. I didn't have one. Of course, guess where I get sunburn. Yeah, I, and I did have SPF, but I just yeah. didn't use it. But so, um, and and by the way, I'm happy if anybody wants, I'll send them the list. Um, I share it with a lot of guys and it is what it is. I mean, make your own list, but I can tell you this thing's been edited a thousand times. But yeah. to cool. your question, like, um, I, I, I'd like to travel simple and lean mm -hmm. and, uh, like a lot of these trips I go on, people are like, wow, you don't have much with you. And, and I start worrying, like maybe I forgot something. Yeah. But I've got a great big, uh, Kuyu 9,000 Taku pack that I use. Uh, they ought to do a story on that pack. The thing's logged like probably 150,000 miles now on air, air, air miles <laughs> in the last five years. Um, and then a gunworks case that came with the yeah. gun. Mm -hmm. And of course, a little bit of concern about weight and stuff, but, um, but yeah, you know, no matter what it's, it's, uh, beside my list. I mean, it's, it's just simply like at worst, like, don't forget your boots, <laughs> you know, socks, clothes, whatever, uh, that you're going to walk out of that tent with in the morning and don't forget your rifle. Don't forget your ammo. Mm -hmm. And what I love about, um, Gunworks newest binoculars now, I mean, my, uh, bino harness, uh, instead of carrying the range finders, et cetera. Um, and back from my longbow days, like keep it simple and stay lean. Uh, I, you know, for me now it's like, I got the gun, I got the ammo and I got the binoculars mm -hmm. and, uh, probably a smartphone in my, in my pocket. Uh, but 
there's no reason for me to sync that smartphone yeah, yeah. to the binoculars now because I usually have that done. But, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, that's all you really need. And cool. then uh, I I try to stay lean, so uh, um, uh, I'm not carrying a lot. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah like shooting sister I brought up. Yeah, I say you brought up tripod earlier. Yep. You know, bipods and with the rifle. Yeah, just our kind of our our standard yep. kit. You know, yep. I mean, there's endless. And I tell that to everybody yeah. I talk to, there's endless shooting accessories you can yeah. try to add, but yeah. it really comes down to that core stuff, yeah. you know, rangefinder, bipod, ammo, yeah. tripod and rifle. Yeah. Right. And I can, I yeah. can go take, you know, kill stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. um, that's cool. I always, always curious, you know, some guys get just like you have, you know, I've got this massive list and that's what comes with me on every hunt or I want to travel lean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I spent, uh, 2021, I was gone nearly six months. Uh, between Mongolia, Pakistan, and Turkey, <laughs> I was in the Yukon, yeah. um, and uh, you know, um, it, it's it's you always you always learn. But uh, fortunately, uh, you know, like the, even on this Mexico hunt, they're like, "Don't bring a lot of clothes." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." And then right at the end, I'm like, "I still brought a lot of clothes." <laughs> it's like three t-shirts. Why do I need three? And then live yeah. live ten days with one. Yep. But um. But yeah, uh, same old story. <laughs> you know, there are those stories out there, guys forgetting their gun. Yep. And guys forgetting their ammo. Wow. You know? And I I heard some podcasts a while back, different group people, whatever, about calibers to take in foreign lands, what's the best caliber in yeah. Mongolia and all that. I'm glad you brought that up. What is, what's something you see over there? there that? Oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, of course, there, you know, most all my hunts right now, I'm taking the 28 nozzler um it's just a smoker uh especially these foreign countries longer shots possibly uh you just want to reduce that air for wind and the 28 just superior over a lot of calibers of course now you know you guys know better than me but the popularity with whatever 30 nozzler or whatever else has come out yeah um prcs and yeah yeah. prcs etc but um uh you know, I've heard one guy was like, well, I suppose, you know, you probably want to stay in a 7M uh, circle in case, you know, you lose your ammo or something on international travel. Yeah. Go somewhere and pick it up. I'm like, where, you know, do you think there's like a Walmart in like uh, Ulan Bator or yeah. Islamabad? Like, <laughs> yeah. um, which is always a worry that your stuff doesn't show. Yet, um, yeah, so 28 for me is just, uh, it's a smoker caliber. Um, but like anything, I think, you know, I don't, people call me and ask questions about these trips and I, you know, the bottom line is if you know how to shoot your rifle, you're accurate. I mean, you know, you're, you're honest with yourself on your shots and you take the shot, calm yourself down and you see that nice El Tire or Galley that you've dreamed of forever. Uh, just, just make the shot, you know, mm-hmm. and um, a bullet through the heart is going to put down anything, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Would be, if, can you say up to this point, what would you be your favorite hunt? Do you, I know that's a pretty broad question that most people get, but. Yeah. You know, I mean, everything's, it's, it, it's interesting. You know, my, my, uh, my drive with all this is probably my father. He, he, mm-hmm. he, he put this bug in me. And so just like this Tiburon hunt, every, every animal I walk up to after I've harvested it, it's, it's a, it's pretty emotional for me and I get the visions of him and, and that kind of background, but, um, they're all good, uh, especially when you're successful. Yeah. But, um, for me, I, I'm adventurous. So these far off lands, you know, I mean, 2020 to one, like I said, I was in six or seven countries and I pretty much li- lived over there. And then I, I did take two rifles on most of that trip, uh, 28 Nosler and that 280. Yep. Um, and, uh, um, seeing a new species, I think one, for example, was years ago, I hunted Azerbaijan for Dagestan tour and I'd never seen a tour. And when they, when I first saw him coming up over on a skyline, I mean, it looked like star Wars, you know, yeah. it's just like, wow, what the hell is this, you know? And, and, um, so seeing these species in their environment to see a high Altair galley, uh, even a small one, you know, we, we sit around here and puff up our chest and talk about, you know, 16 inch bases on rams, whatever, and, and maybe 17 and they mm-hmm. over there, they're, you know, they start at 20, you know, <laughs> so, 
Um, so, um, everything's pretty magnificent. The Mark core, um, for me is, is really cool. Uh, somebody wanted to see some of my video of just watching them on the clips. I mean, fascinating animals. Um, hmm. so yeah. And then even the little Uriels, you know, Punjab Uriel and Afghan Uriel, Bukharan Uriel, all these little, little sheep species over there in Central Asia. Um, they're cool. You know, they're small, but they're really yeah. cool. So I don't know if I have a favorite. Yeah. I figured. That's usually yeah. the answer yeah. I get. Yeah. I'm always just curious. For me, it, I guarantee it'll be the most meaningful. And yeah. I'd have to, you know, I'd, I'd have to say probably my most meaningful hunt was, uh, I helped my dad with, uh, get his last big orange sheep. He had yeah. a quadruple bypass about four months before. Hmm. And we shot that sheep right over here, opening day of, uh, uh, in area three and shake his hand over that ram. And then, you know, we lost him later, uh, super meaningful, Dang. but, uh, uh, it's the reason we hunt. That's right out there and have those, those memories. And so that's a big one. And I didn't even pull the trigger. Yeah. One, so. <laughs> those are, those are so, some of my favorites as well. I would agree. Yeah. Hunting with somebody. Yeah. You know, either for a big, a big sheep like that, that you've yeah. kind of thought about forever or somebody's first, you know, big sure. game, you know, that they've ever taken. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, Sheep Foundation's doing that lesson one now, mm -hmm. uh, whoever started that. And that, that to me is a really cool club because, you know, to hear about some somebody graduating out of that, they got their first sheep. I mean, that that's a memory you know that they're never going to forget. Mm -hmm. it's, and if they're truly a sheep fanatic, uh, an addict like me, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's a that's a super impressive moment when somebody yeah. gets their first sheep. So, yeah. Well, um, we're probably getting pretty good on time. Um, I'm just trying to think here. I have. Uh, I talked to, obviously we talked to a lot of, I talked to a lot of customers who travel around like you as well. How many, uh, you know, how often do you see one of our guns in camp when you show up? Like, you know, there's usually you and some other yeah, people. That's there, interesting. Right? You know, I, since I started hunting, uh, with the gun works, uh, what, 2015, 16 in there, um, more and more, you know, it's funny. You go to these countries, they don't know English, you know, you might be in Pakistan or they speak Urdu or far western mongolia i mean hell i was just down in mexico i mean anywhere you go and you got that gun work scope uh scope cover on that identifies a gun you know of course you pull out your gun everybody wants to look at it yeah and uh some of me want to shoot it and <laughs> and it's so funny like a guy that only knows urdu and northern himalayas of pakistan will mutter the word you know gun work <laughs> <laughs> really it's like yeah man you've seen Amazing. it before you know yeah so more and more prominent, I mean, all the time, uh, the gun work stamp is, is, uh, on this earth and, and I think it speaks to the quality of the gun. You yeah. Know? A lot of my, you know, and of course being in this kind of addiction of these international sheep, I have a lot of friends I've made, uh, that have the same addiction I have and they're hunting, hunting the world. And, and, uh, a lot of them are obviously gun works guys and, and, uh, it's the same thing. I mean. It, it's crazy. You go that far around the world and you pack, you know, 20 rounds, maybe sometimes 40, maybe you're only allowed 40 or 20 or whatever, mm -hmm. but you're always kind of in the back of your mind, you're conscious of this, uh, amount of ammo you got. Cause if things go bad or something goes wrong, you might have to burn up some ammo. Maybe you lose ammo for some reason. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, at least for me, it's a little bit of a worry. And, uh, then you go over there and you usually take one or two shots to side in. Once you've traveled, you know, 13,000 miles and then, uh, you go on the hunt and then it's one shot and you're done. You know, it's like, wow, I'm packing back, you know, 37 rounds. Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, like, but, um, yeah, uh, the gunworks stuff is, it, it's kind of like some of our more popular camo companies, the gunworks yeah. is more prominent and, and, uh, the guides speak about it and that's, what's impressive. That's cool. Yeah. No, I've, 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 I always use you as an example. I, um, usually I'll, I'll bring up the name every now and then, Hey, it's, this is, you know, Mike, or you probably heard of Mike. And anyways, I've used you as a, an example for one, our long range university by far, right. You've, you've before just, Hey, I, I bought a gun and I have a lot of guys that'll just buy a gun and then, Hey, you want to come to our class? And then, Oh, I'm, I'm too busy or I don't have the time for it, you know, and seeing that you've kind of done the full circle 
right? Yeah. And seeing how it's helped you be successful, right? Yeah. You know, it kind of speaks for itself, right? You know, I can try to sell it all I want, you know, but I, uh, I almost wish our class was required, you know, if you owned a rifle. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, and I'm, I'm not getting paid by Gunworks. So I don't get anything free for doing any of these uh, endorsements, and but they're from my, from my knowledge, you know, just. Uh, another observation I have is just recently, you know, walking around the shows like this spring, um, there's a lot of, a lot of gun, um, uh, university mm. lesson groups out there, whatever. And, um, you know, I look back and it's like, you know, Gunworks was foundational in that in the industry mm. and, and how smart that is to tie your gun, your product to education. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's, that's a a hallmark of any good business. Yeah. And, um, I see these other universities, I'm sure they're fine, but you know, to come out and, and, uh, be in a LRU with somebody who actually, you know, built that gun from scratch and is there and the factory's right down the road, you know, yeah. uh, it just, it's all complete. It's easy. Um, I think there's been a few times it might've been a problem with a gun on a range or something. You mm -hmm. guys are like, Hey, let's, we'll get this fixed. Yep. And, and it's just, uh, it's a really good program. And, and again, you watch people beside yourself, you watch people improve by the end of the, what, you know, two or three days, whatever yep. it is. And it's, to me, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I mean, to take the shots in a, in an, in a university setting like that, where you're reaching out there. I mean, that Ensign, I think that one competition targets like 1500 yards. Yep, 1570, I think so it was. You know, and seeing guys, you know, uh, smoking that thing you know it's like wow i mean it's like crazy yeah you were using your cut yeah i, I remember that smart but uh hey we got you on steel if i remember oh yeah yeah, yeah was... little little uh what is that six pound yep six pound cut seven mm psalm and the, the, with a scope that only dialed up to 800 i think yep. and so we were counting the clicks past yep. that yep holding and, over i think yeah. a little holdover too it's kind of like a little quiggly yep deal but uh that was yeah good. that was good it, it performed yep <laughs> Yep. It's fun. Well, that's awesome. Mike, I just want to say thanks for coming over. I've, yep. Thanks I've, for I've, having me. Yeah, you bet. I'm lucky I talk to you more than most most guys. Um, and so, I uh, yeah, I look up to you, and I appreciate you coming and uh, talking with me for a little while here. Awesome. It's been my pleasure. Cool. Well, hey, people, thank you for listening in, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks. If you like what you're hearing here, please take a second and give us a five-star rating and a positive review on iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. We appreciate your feedback and suggestions for topics you'd like discussed or questions you want answered on the podcast. You can reach out on Facebook or Instagram or send us an email to podcast at gunworks.com. Also, be sure and check out our full offering of long-range gear at gunworks.com. Use promo code LRP for free shipping on any order.